For many years, social engineering was the preferred method to get your money. Since the Russian Mafia has been into this business, they like to be a little bit more direct in their approach. And now they've moved just to straight extortion. In the beginning, the extortion was limited to pornographic websites. The attempt was usually fairly weak and would occur while the person was browsing certain websites. Usually a pop-up would appear making some claims about uh, your activity is illegal and wanting you to make some form of a payment. Now most people wised up to this fairly quickly and it really didn't work very effectively. A much more effective way to extort the money was to make you think you had actually committed a crime by separating the act of browsing the website with the actual demand for money. This was then made by having a program installed on your computer that would then, after the fact, pop up and claim that you were doing something illegal and demand a fine, which was the demand for payment. Now this actually required that the victim has a guilty conscience and for the most part was not terribly effective because there really wasn't any teeth behind the threat. There was however one case of a person in Florida who upon receiving this threat promptly turned himself into the police because of child pornography that was in fact on his computer. But overall this was not nearly as effective and still required some form of a ruse to work. Now the Mafia is not really known for its subtlety and has moved on to just frank, direct threats. In the process of your daily activity now, if you download an infected file, it will just encrypt your hard drive and tell you outright that your files are unavailable and locked and you must pay them in order to get your files back. There is no longer any claim that there is anything illegal going on. It just locks your computer and says, gimme, gimme, gimme. So how does this work? Well, the first step is you get an email or you go to a website where an infected file is present or you download an infected file and open it. This is where social engineering is necessary to work. The email or website needs to get you to download this file and open it in order to allow the attack to occur. The email is usually sent from somebody that you know whose computer is infected and is usually without their knowledge. It will contain some form of a setup, some play to your emotions, and then offer the resolution, which includes opening the file. However, over time, the attack has evolved to a simple, here's a file you've requested, or check out this cute picture that I'm sending you, hoping that your knowledge of that person will entice you to open up that file. The bottom line is to get you to click on that link or that file attached. Step two, the file contains some form of malicious code that encrypts your files and locks you out of your computer. Step three, the program displays a message telling you what it has done and demands its payment. Step four, if you decide to pay them, then you have to send them money. And this is usually through some form of an anonymous internet payment system uh, that, is, uh, that is untraceable to law enforcement or even using bitcoins. Step five, if you're lucky, you get an encryption key that allows you to decrypt your files and unlock your computer. It is important for you to realize that you're dealing with dishonest people and paying them does not necessarily mean that you're going to get your files back because they may not feel particularly compelled to uphold their end of the bargain. Now, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of Bitcoin. There are several ways you can prevent an attack. First, you should always keep your computer up to date with software patches provided by your operating system and other programs such as Flash, Internet Explorer, Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. You should be using the most recent version of the operating system. Windows XP is not supported anymore and is also full of security holes that are not being patched. It is important that you understand that both Windows and Mac computers are equally vulnerable. The days when Mac computer users could claim that their computers were safe is long over. You should also have some form of a virus scanner on your system and it should be set to active mode, scanning your computer continuously for incoming threats. If you own a Windows computer, you actually have one free of, free of charge and working at all times. Window Defender 
works pretty well. And as long as you maintain proper computer discipline and not expose yourself unduly to risk, it probably will do the trick. I personally only have Windows Defender on my computer, and when I do regular audit scans with other programs, I've never found any hidden problems. No program, however, can catch all attacks, so you must always be watchful. Also, do not use any of those online virus scanners that pop up, and certainly do not believe any pop-up that tells you that your computer is infected. These are scams to get you to download the virus. Next, never open any unsolicited email attachments. It doesn't matter who it's from. Their email address or computer may have been compromised by a virus. You should also carefully read the email message and look for telltale signs of a social engineering attack. Place your emotion or some form of time urgency are very, very common. Look for impersonal phrasing or poor grammar, which is very common as the virus writer doesn't actually know you personally and cannot really add the depth and warmth that the person who seems to be sending this, who knows you, would usually use when sending an email. If something seems off in the phrasing or something's odd in the message, alarm bells in your head should be going off. You can also check where a link is going to take you before you click it. Simply placing your mouse cursor on the link without clicking, somewhere on the screen you will see where that link is supposed to go. Just because somebody sends you a link doesn't mean that it will go to that location. When the link is created, the programmer can direct the link to go anywhere else in the world, but display a different address. If you look at the intended link and you don't recognize it, then you should not under any circumstances click that link. Similarly, any file sent to you should not be opened unless you are certain it is being deliberately sent by the sender. If you have any doubts, then contact the sender through a different means such as phone or text message to verify that they've sent you this attachment. When you're sending an attachment or file to someone, I personally think it's polite to let them know that it is legitimate by using some phrase or detail in the email message to let them know that I am actually on the other end sending the file and it is legitimate. If it is absolutely urgent that they review the file, then call them and let them know. Now despite this, you may, you may get hit. And if so, then your best option is to restore your computer from a backup. The program is recently installed and if you, del if you restore from a previous backup, the file's gone and everything that you previously was unencrypted is returned to you. But over the years, we've been pretty sloppy in our backup discipline because hard drives are relatively reliant and the only time when a backup was necessary was when your hard drive failed. Since this was relatively infrequent, most people didn't bother with a backup on a regular basis, if ever. Now there's a reason to back up much more frequently. If you get hit with a ransomware attack, the best way to get rid of it is to use a backup from the recent past. This means you need to be much more aggressive in your backup plans and have this set up in advance. Once you're hit, it's too late. It is best to keep your backups offline if you can, and don't leave them directly connected to your computer, as some ransomware programs may be looking for backups and try to corrupt them before proceeding to encrypt your files. As well, backup often and practice restoring your files so you're prepared in the event of an attack.